Today is the day that AMD's review embargo lifts on this Ryzen 7 9800X 3D processor. The processor I've been waiting for for months. Unless you already own this Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, in which case you'll probably be very happy with this processor, both before, during and after my review. Pretty much everybody else who's in the market for a gaming processor, you ought to pause this video head over to your favourite e-tailer and place an order immediately. Now admittedly sales don't start until tomorrow, so you might have to wait a bit. And just as soon as you've placed your order, return, sit down, press play, watch my review, and I think you'll be very happy with the wise decision that you've just made. Before I get into the performance of the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, a very brief background to this review. We reviewers were briefed on the processor a couple of weeks ago by AMD. We have one of those team call things. It was very quick. In essence, you take one of these Ryzen 9000 processors, a regular Ryzen 7, you add some new 3D V cache and bingo, you have your brand new processor. The new cache is incredibly significant. The annoyance is that we reviewers were forbidden by AMD's embargo to tell you we had a processor ready for review or that we were working on a review or anything about it. And the extra double annoying thing is that last week AMD announced news about the new processor and talked about the V cache which is the key feature of this processor. So the news is already out there. However, let's recap that. We saw the first 3D vCache on Zen 3 Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, and that 3D vCache transformed a good processor into a brilliant gaming processor. The 3D vCache was put on top of the chiplets, and that meant it acted as an insulator between the processor cores and the heat spreader. It meant the 5800X 3D ran slower than a regular 5800X, but you got better gaming performance, so it was a trade-off. Exactly the same was true of the 7800X 3D Zen 4 part. The 3D part was slower than a regular Ryzen 7 Zen 4 part, but in gaming it was absolutely stunning. With Zen 5 9800X 3D, things have changed. The vCache is now under the chiplets, and that means we get the best of both worlds. We don't have the insulator getting in the way of things, and that means that the base speed of this processor is 500 megahertz faster than the 7800X 3D. So this 9800X 3D promises great things. It runs on plenty of power, but not too much power, at a good clock speed, you've got loads of 3D cache, and you can overclock it using AMD's Ryzen Master or the BIOS of your X870 or X670 motherboard. This is potentially superb and means that we have plenty to dig into. Let's take a brief tour of the hardware that's been on my test bench for the last week or so. We're starting with this Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master X. That's obviously Z790 chipset, Intel 14th, 13th and 12th gen. And I allied those processors with this G-Skill Trident ZRGB DDR5 6800, which gives that family of processors a slight lift over the 6000 that I've previously used. The other Intel setup is this MSI Meg Z890 Ace. And that's with Core Ultra 200S, Ultra 9, Ultra 7, Ultra 5. I've been using Crucial T700 Gen 5 SSDs on each of the test platforms. And here I had a change from my goodness gracious me Core Ultra 200S launch has been an absolute nightmare video. Uh, in that launch I was using some Kingston Fury CU DIMMs that were supplied by MSI and they worked absolutely brilliantly rated at uh, DDR5 8200. Strange thing is there have been various BIOS updates on that platform you won't be shocked to learn. And suddenly that Kingston memory appeared to be misbehaving on this platform. Uh, so I switched over to this G-Skill Trident Z5 CK. Also CU DIMMs, also rated at 8200. And looks amazingly spangly. However, functionally that memory should be exactly the same as the memory I showed you last time round. And that's what my test results show. So that's two Intel platforms. And then we move on to AMD. Now, obviously the focus here is on the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, which is Zen 5 and also 3D. 
and also it's a Ryzen 7, therefore 8 cores, 16 threads. And that means we're interested to see how it compares against other Ryzen 7s, also against other 3D processors, but also against Zen 5 processors, because we want to see which part of this processor either works well or perhaps doesn't work well at all. And that means we've got loads of AMD hardware. Many, many, many processors. In addition to the processor, AMD sent me this ASRock X870E Tai Chi motherboard. In addition to the motherboard, AMD also sent me this G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB. It's DDR5 6000 and it's rated at CAS 28. Now, I was surprised by that because I figured that with the latest Degisa 1202, we'd be getting DDR5 8000. I mean, I've already got DDR5 8000, which I've used and I like, albeit I've demonstrated in previous videos, 8000 over 6000 gives a very slight lift to AMD on the latest platform, but it doesn't make a huge amount of odds. So I thought, well, fair enough. If AMD is sending me DDR5 6000, I shall use DDR5 6000, but I'll use my Trident True DDR5 6000, which also happens to be G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, no RGB. The other peculiar thing is that AMD also sent this, a Samsung SSD 990 Pro, so that's Gen 4, and it has a version of Windows installed, Windows 11 23H2. We're currently on 24H2, as I've explored in a number of videos. I gave this setup a quick run just to check it all worked and there was nothing peculiar going on, uh, and then I parked it in favour of the MSI X870E carbon Wi-Fi that I've previously used and which is an absolutely blooming amazing motherboard. It's a known quantity and I've been using it for a while now for benchmarking. I know what it's about. The ASRock Tai Chi I'm absolutely sure is fine, but I'm sticking to known good products. As you can see, I'm displaying this motherboard on an open bench setup, uh, which was supplied to us by MSI, hence the groovy logoing. And the power supply continues to be Seasonic Focus. This is the very latest version. It's GX1000, so gold, 1000 watt, ATX 3.1. The cooler I use throughout my testing is this Fantex Glacier 1 D360. So it's a 360mm AIO, just as the name suggests, and the fans are 30mm thick. I'm quite sure with the current crop of power profiles, Intel running on 250 watts, AMD running on much less, that any reasonable cooler would have done a good job. And my graphics card is this MSI RTX 1490 Ventus 3X 24 gigabyte. And there we go. That's all the hardware. So how did I get on in my testing? As a world leading manufacturer, CyberPower PC UK expertly builds each PC with the largest range of parts available in the UK. We handle all your packages with care and ship them directly to you on next day delivery. Visit cyberpowersystem.co.uk. The first job was to do a quick run in Cinebench R23 with everything set to auto and the memory on Expert DDR5 6000. We see the processor cores running at 5.2 gigahertz. The processor is drawing about 130 watts. And the final score in this quick run, 23,313. As that is a headline feature of this processor with its new version of 3D vCache. The first thing was to use Ryzen Master to auto overclock the CPU. And this was a dismal failure. In essence, it did absolutely nothing. And that meant it was time to dive into the BIOS and try changing some settings manually. Optimized performance didn't seem to do a great deal. So we dug further into PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive. Our first attempt at overclocking was slightly on the aggressive side. It helped CPU performance, but hurt gaming performance. But after a bit of trial and error, we found some settings that worked quite nicely, and we gave Cinebench R23 another run. Now you can see the cores running at 5.37 gigahertz, and the final score, 24,061. So yes, this processor can be overclocked. However, the results are fairly marginal. And now let's get into our performance charts, starting with Geekbench 6 Multicore, which favors newer processors on more modern platforms. It also favors many cores and higher speeds. Top of the charts, we have the Core Ultra 9 from Intel and the Core i9-14900K. And below that in third place, Ryzen 9 9950X. As you can see, pure grunt wins the day. 
eight core processors are in the middle of the charts. The two blue bars, we have the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D overclocked, followed by the same processor on auto. The red bar a couple of notches down from that is the Ryzen 7 9700X i.e. the non-3D version overclocked. That means it's running on 157 watts at 5.3 gigahertz. The second red bar is the Ryzen 7 9700X on auto. So a nominal 65 watts, but 88 watts in practice and a mere 4.5 gigahertz. The green bar is the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. That pulls 82 watts and runs at 4.8 gigahertz. So you might think it would compare with the Ryzen 7 9700X, but it actually loses by a significant margin. Geekbench 6 single core. This is a bit of an oddball. Right up the top of the chart, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X, very closely followed by the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. Both of those overclocked. Close behind those, we have the two processors running on auto. And then right down the bottom of the chart, we have the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Cinebench R23 multi-core. As you'd expect, eight core processors get crushed in this test. The new Ryzen 7 3D overclocked is the best of the ones we've highlighted. And behind that, we have the non-3D version, but it's only a very few points behind. Both of these processors running 5.4, 5.3 gigahertz. On auto, the separation is much more significant because the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D on auto runs at 5.2 gigahertz, where the Ryzen 7 9700X is running much slower. Ryzen 7 7800X 3D Zen 4 gets absolutely pummeled. However, in CPU power consumption, the roles are reversed. The Zen 4 part uses almost no power. The Zen 5 9700X on auto also uses very little power. And then we step up. We have the 9800X 3D pulling 120 watts and overclocked 141 watts. The Ryzen 7 9700X overclocked 157 watts. Of course, this pales into comparison when you look at the processors at the very bottom of the chart putting 250 or 253 watts. CPU temperatures, what an enormous spread. I've normalized these figures for 25 degrees ambient. The Ryzen 7 9700X a mere 53 degrees. The Ryzen 7 9800X 3D both on auto and overclocked in the mid 70s, along with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. However, the overclocked Ryzen 7 9700X pushes all the way up to 90 degrees. In 3D Mark CPU profile, we see the eight core processors in the lower half of the chart. The best of the bunch is the Ryzen 7 9700X overclocked. However, the overclocked Ryzen 7 9800X 3D is only a tiny amount behind. Then we see the 9800X 3D on auto. There's quite a big gap back to the Ryzen 7 9700X on auto and the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D falls down the chart. 3D Mark Time Spy, so we're combining the processor with our RTX 4090 graphics, and we can see quite a lot of separation between these processors. Ryzen 7 9800X 3D overclock does well, but it's also pretty good on auto. The Ryzen 7 9700X is a distance behind. Surprisingly, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D continues to be down at the bottom of the chart. And now it's time for gaming. Far Cry 6 at 1080p, we're using the Ultra preset. AMD's figures will use 1080p with the high preset. Right at the top of the chart, we have the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D overclocked with an average of 264 FPS and a superb 1% low of 170. On auto, it's only a tiny amount behind on 258 FPS on average, and the Zen 4 7800X 3D does very nicely at 219. The non-3D Ryzen 7 9700X on auto comes in at 192 and overclocked at 188. The difference of the 3D cache for the Zen 4 is impressive but the new 3D cache absolutely makes a difference. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora 1080p Ultra preset. We can see here there's very little separation between the scores. In essence the Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and the Zen 4 7800X 3D tie. At first glance this is quite surprising but this exact point was covered by AMD in their briefing. They have a slide titled Bottleneck Titles, and they spell it out. Some game engines are not limited by the processor when it comes to average frame rates. On the other hand, some games in their top performance gains chart are. Some game engines respond incredibly well to Zen 5 with the new 3D V cache. In other words, your mileage may vary. 
So getting back to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora 1080p Ultra, 3D cache clearly brings a win, regardless of whether it's Zen 5 or Zen 4, but you get a very good gaming result almost regardless of the processor. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p on ultra high preset, we see quite a lot of separation, Top of the chart, it's the new Zen 5 9800X 3D on auto, very closely followed by the overclocked version of that processor. The average dips slightly, but the 1% low increases slightly. In essence, it's a tie. And very close behind that, we see the Zen 4 7800X 3D. The non-3D Ryzen 7 9700X is a significant distance further down the chart at 168 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p on Ultra Preset, a clear win for Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, and the overclock brings a very small improvement in 1% lows. A distance behind that we see the Zen 4 7800X 3D, and a further distance behind that the Ryzen 7 9700X. Our final game is Total War Pharaoh at 1080p on the Ultra Preset, top of the chart at 338 FPS on average, Ryzen 7 9800X 3D overclocked. On auto it's 10 frames slower at 328 frames per second. The 1% low also takes a dip. In third place you'll note the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D doing very well but a distance behind. That processor has been in these charts throughout. I haven't made a reference to it because the Ryzen 9 with 3D cache on one core complex but not on the other is a very strange processor in my opinion and the behavior is quite erratic. Anyway Ryzen 9 7950X 3D 268 FPS on average. Type behind that we have the new Zen 5 Ryzen 9 9950X. And slap in the middle of the chart we have the Ryzen 7 9700X. Before I get to my conclusions about the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D let's just touch on pricing. This part launches at 479 US dollars that's going to be plus tax. The Ryzen 7 7800X 3D launched back in April 23 at 449 dollars. In the UK that cost us £479 including VAT. So you can do a bit of calculation and you can decide that perhaps this part's going to come out at 499 AMD UK has been crystal clear with me that the uh, MSRP for the new 3D is going to be £449.99 including VAT. UK retailers have been crystal clear with me that yes they could do that but the margin would be absolutely tiny and they say expect to see it on sale at 469.99 inc vat so msrp versus what you are actually expected to pay either way i think that pricing is perfectly fair but if you look around you can probably find a ryzen 7 x 3d on sale at the moment for about 400 pounds they are rapidly going out of stock for some reason they've been discounted heavily don't understand it they are a superb processor and we get to my conclusions and these are short and sweet pros the good points the gaming performance on auto is superb second point is that general cpu performance of this new 3d part matches the ryzen 7 9700x and sometimes beats it and thirdly the power draw and operating temperature are fairly modest Cons, the only negative I can come up with is that the price is slightly high. I'm sure you'll hear some people say that. Personally, I'm not really that bothered about price, as I've already said. You could argue if you're spending <clears throat> £1,500 on a 4090, if you can find one, what's a new 5090 going to be when it comes out? Two grand? In that context, AMD could have charged £600 for this processor and it wouldn't have been unreasonable. The bigger thing for me with this new 3D V-Cache, however, is what it says about Zen 5 uh, as, a, as a range of products, which is the original response to the Ryzen 9000s when they came out, the Granite Ridge desktop processors, was that Zen 5 was a flop, which I consider to be a silly thing to say. Zen 5 includes Epic, and it includes laptop parts as well, and it includes this. What we didn't know was that Zen 5 has clearly been rejigged to take better account of this new 3D V-Cache. And I expect we're going to see this 3D V-Cache on all sorts of parts in the future. Epic for sure. Why not Threadripper? Laptops? Yes indeed. Bring it on. I think this is the start of something particularly special. And I'm looking forward to it. I love this processor. I'm giving it 9 out of 10, and I was genuinely torn about giving it 9.5 or possibly even 10, which is something Kikuru doesn't do. 
I've settled on nine. It's a must have. It's superb. Head over to kickguru.net to read our reviews and also we're on TikTok.